everyone, we are live and we are doing another interview segment today to discuss entrepreneurship and get people involved with passionate entrepreneurship and building your own exciting projects. And I'm excited to have Ross McFarlane on today. And we're going to do this live split screen and um, Ross actually just came back from the Philippines and he's learned a lot about outsourcing and he's building up a web design business and focusing on WordPress support. So he's going to be talking about that. And actually just next year he'll, he'll have this WordPress support platform launched. So that's going to be quite exciting to hear about that. And, uh, I'm looking forward to seeing what, what Ross has learned from his, his travels. Sounds like a really fascinating guy and he's done quite a lot as well in terms of, um, just in terms of business and whatnot. So I'm really excited to have him on here. We're just going to add Ross here. So Ross is, uh, he was starting a Facebook group for entrepreneurs as well. And I highly recommend anyone that's looking to build a community to look Trevor, at what building is up? a Facebook group. Hey, how's it going? Is that, can you hear me all right? Oh. Yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Man, I'm trying to figure out a, uh, the Facebook Live. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's going well. Yeah, it went. How are you? So you, um, oh, pretty good. So you're in uh, Australia. Yeah, uh, right down now. under. <laughs> so yeah, Adelaide is driving us literally right at the bottom. Oh, excellent. How far away is that from Melbourne? Australia. Um, if we if you drive, um, if you're trying to save a bit of cash, then it'll be about an eight hour drive. But uh, yeah, it's about an hour, hour <laughs> half flight. <laughs> nice. Yeah, so it's not that far. Well, I think Aus No, no, it's not too bad. I mean, uh, I find Australians are probably the nicest people, other than Canadians. <laughs> I'm from Canada, but uh, other than Canadians, every Australian. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'd say like just us, like our two countries are just absolutely probably the nicest people I, I've met. I've come across tons of Australians and I can, can't can say enough good things about about uh, you guys. Is that it's, right? It's just fascinating. Very humble. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I think we're just really laid back. I think, I think that's just what it is. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, yeah, yeah a, a close friend right. of mine uh, I met at university, he's from Canada, and yeah, really laid back, really chill guy, so it's it's great. Awesome. Well, um, you came back just uh, recently from the Philippines, and uh, I'm just curious um, what you what you learned from that trip and, uh, and why you were there, and I think it would be exciting to hear about... Uh, your your journey into entrepreneurship and what you're uh, what you're learning. Yeah, absolutely. And then uh, and then we can get to how quickly you grew your group. I noticed uh, less than a month ago you had under a hundred, so <laughs> <laughs> you've done well. <laughs> yeah, my group's well, like, thank my group's you. About yeah, a lot of three weeks old. I'm about 150 people. I was like, oh, holy shit, Trevor's done heaps well. <laughs> <laughs> it's I. It's like this experimentation. I I've been getting into like growth hacking and, and just. Um, connecting with as many people as possible but it's almost been like a full-time job for me yeah <laughs> oh, i understand but like, uh, even getting it to 150 I was yeah. like, oh, this is, i've got so many things to do this is just one extra thing on the list but i guess that's uh part exactly of <laughs> yes oh definitely but it's, it's lots of fun regardless yeah nice uh yeah so basically i went to the philippines uh, back in september so my my background story i guess it's kind of the the standard entrepreneur story where you're in the nine to five and you decide you want to leave. But mine was a little bit different where I've basically always had that spark since a, a child. So, you know, even as early as eight, uh, I'd go to markets with my old man. Um, he would buy things at an auction and then we'd go to the markets and sell them there. So I guess at such an early stage or an early age, I was getting in that environment of basically learning arbitrages and basically getting that, that need to you know really do something more than just working behind a desk 
Um, so for the last five mm. years, I've actually been a state level medical practice manager, uh, which is predominantly in pharmaceutical sales. So a little bit different than uh, the startup I'm yeah, venturing into. Um, I've always had a background in you know a bit of uh, WordPress development and things like that as well. So I basically went to the Philippines to learn more about outsourcing so I can start a new business in the first quarter of next year. So it was a fantastic trip. Uh, my old man now lives in Thailand. He's retired over there. Um, so I went to visit with him first for a week and then I went to the Philippines the week after. And uh, yeah, basically just sort of like a sponge. I just sucked up all this information as much as I could possibly get. And uh, yeah, it was a really interesting trip. It was, it was really good fun. Excellent. What did, uh, what did you really learn about uh, the Philippines? And if I'm looking at the Philippines as, as an outsourcing hub, I, I feel like they are, they're leading the um, kind of the area in terms of virtual assistance. Like they, they really are hands on and they're fantastic people to work with that I've, I've actually found in, in some of my uh, experiences with them. I'm just wondering what, what kind of impressions you got when you were there. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the reason I went over there was because India really was the original precedent for outsourcing. Um, but now that they've been so established, mm. it's basically becoming a point where it's, uh, they're starting to jack up their price. <laughs> now, uh, Trevor, mm -hmm. I'll move it. Actually, yeah. I can put on uh, headphones if that helps. Or does it sound okay? Oh, okay. Yeah, I, this sounds I, great. We'll, we'll but, uh... All right. So, yeah, basically the Philippines there. Uh, in the earlier stages. So they're still one of the largest outsourcing hubs in the world, but because India is that little bit further ahead, I thought, all right, I'll go to the Philippines so that way I can essentially get a similar service, but at a cheaper rate. So um, going over there, it was great to see how established it is. Uh, heading over to the business district, the, the vast differences in wealth were crazy. Um, I made a vlog on my YouTube channel and basically you could see the differences between some areas were literally dirt poor uh, and then other areas like the business district was just, just immaculate. It was, you know, everyone was so friendly and nice. Um, in the area I was staying, it was basically, it was a beautiful hotel and I was wondering, I was a little suspicious as to why it was so cheap and turns out it's because it was in a bit of a dodgy area. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it was uh, basically some bits <laughs> right near where I was staying. There was one street where I actually didn't feel comfortable filming for my vlog because it was literally just a street of tents and there was a naked baby standing in the middle of the road crying. I was like, yeah, this is, this is dodgy. <laughs> so I don't really want to whip out my iPhone and then be like, holy shit, like there's like a year's wage. <laughs> but uh, then you go to the business district. <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah, just the amount of wealth there from a lot of entrepreneurs that have actually come to the Philippines to establish their own businesses and, and have micro sourcing or outsourcing businesses is crazy. So I met a lot of CEOs while I was there, uh, scheduled a lot of meetings and interviews just to learn more about outsourcing and, and how they can help me achieve my goals. And uh, yeah, it was, it was really, it was a beautiful place. Uh, aside from a few pockets in certain areas, uh, I would definitely recommend going there. Uh, I didn't get to see the islands, unfortunately, so I'll definitely have to go back and, and check those out. Um, but yeah, for the trick there, it was more about learning to outsource through companies because I've always, whether it's been, say, side hustles whilst I was working full time or previous businesses, I've always used uh, VAs and you know outsourced staff, but it's always been freelancers through, say, Upwork or um, not necessarily Fiverr. Fiverr is good for one-off jobs, but yeah, Upwork, uh, Online Jobs PH is probably my favorite go-to. Um, so yeah, basically just I've always outsourced through freelancers. So I thought, all right, well, I really want to you know, take to the next level and, and have an established company that's actually outsourcing, um, not properly, but I guess more secure because when you're going to be dealing with clients' information, then you really want to make sure that when you do outsource, it's to a, a safe environment. Because when I've previously been outsourcing to freelancers, it's been for my own businesses and things like that. So it hasn't really mattered all that much. But with the new business I'll be launching next year, it'll be unlimited WordPress support for only 76 US a month, and that's no contract. So I'll be dealing with a lot of clients' information, a lot of clients' websites, their cPanel logins, things like that. So I really want to make sure that the information is secure and um, you know that I've got the best interest for the clients, and at the same time, I don't get sued. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Oh, I, uh, I checked out your, your launch page for... Uh... It's the WordPressClub.com. That's right. And uh, anyone can have it. 
check that out. Awesome. What inspired you to start a WordPress type business? I, I mean, number one, it's it's the the platform to choose if you're looking to build a website. So, I mean, that's definitely a given. But why, in your situation, did you decide to focus on WordPress? Definitely. I mean, well, just exactly that. Like trying to niche down at the same time. WordPress has almost thirty percent of the world's websites. So. You know, I thought, well, if I'm going to niche yeah. down, how about niche down in a really big market? <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I mean, the, the target audience obviously niche down again and again. It'll be, you know, startup entrepreneurs, small and medium-sized business owners, things like that. But I really just wanted to be able to focus my efforts on such a large market. So if in the beginning I'm trying to find what markets are reacting better to the business, I've got that large enough area to work with. Whereas if I... Specifically, for instance, pick, um, say, personal trainers. For an old business I had, there was a website, a bit of a backstory. I basically made a website. All in all, it was about 40 grand's worth. Long story short, and if I can offer anyone any advice, validate your markets first. Because <laughs> there was a, uh, basically a lead generation type um, you know, scenario in the US and in the UK, and they were killing it. Like it was going really well. So I thought, well, Australia doesn't really have anything like that. So I'm going to mimic this in Australia and I'm just going to throw heaps of money in it and just let's just get it built and make it all nice and shiny instead of having a lean startup. And then the market didn't really react that well. So basically, yeah, lean startup. I figured, all right, I'll do something like uh, WordPress support very lean to start up with, something that's almost an immediate uh, return because if you're getting uh, clients, then straight away you can offer, you know, I can uh, basically do a bit myself and then once it scales, I can actually outsource to get staff to help with that. So then ultimately it will be 24-7 support. Um, but it's funny you say that, you know, WordPress is the, the platform to have because I actually opened up a ClickFunnels account last night for the first time <laughs> with, uh, with the new course that I'm launching about uh, how to outsource uh, virtual assistants and halve your working week by leveraging their time. I figured, well, instead of making a membership site on WordPress, I'll make a quick ClickFunnels one uh, just to get up and running. So I played around for about an hour last night. So that was interesting. Um, I definitely preferred WordPress. <laughs> <laughs> No, no, it's good to I'm, well, I'm seeing. Well, yeah, I, I'm seeing a lot of people hopping on with ClickFunnels. It's it's a very popular platform for affiliate marketing, and I'm just seeing it, just the popularity of it. But uh, I'm just wondering, you know, in your experience, uh, what, why would somebody want to consider ClickFunnels versus WordPress, or or vice versa? Is it really that technical piece that you you found that was kind of the the roadblock? Yeah, so I think that that's really the biggest, uh, I guess, selling point is that from a technical perspective, you know, I can do it either way, but I really wanted to just learn because, mm -hmm. you know, there's a lot of courses being sold and everyone was saying put it up on ClickFunnels and um, a few other platforms. So I thought, well, you know, just because I'm always interested in learning new things, I figured I'll give it a bit of a go and, and have a look. So with, uh, with ClickFunnels, it's really, there's a lot that they need to develop still. Uh, a lot of areas in regards to functionality and just user-friendly uh, service isn't quite there yet, but it's still very easy to use. And it's some, someone from a zero technical background getting something up within, say, a few hours is, is fantastic to offer. So I think it's still a great platform, um, but there is a bit of work that needs to be done to it um, just to really get it so you can go from A to B to C because... I had to use a lot of YouTube videos to really understand certain areas because there was zero explanation as to well, what's a URL and then what's a secret URL. So I went on YouTube, had a look, and then I started to understand these processes. Yeah. Well, um, I want to circle back because you mentioned the $40,000 investment okay. in, <laughs> in a website. And, um, I Actually, it stands out to me because when I was in uh, corporate marketing, um, that was around what we were spending on a website. And and you talk about validation, and I just think it's so critical as an entrepreneur to uh, to, to focus on, on not spending so much money up front, which is kind of what I like about your what you're, what you're doing with WordPress there because it's not an expensive thing up front. And I think that's that's really important for entrepreneurs is to look at – how can they get their idea out there without so much upfront investment? I think that's really critical. Absolutely, for sure. I'm just because I mean, yeah. Basically, even with being, you know, having a WordPress background, you know, my business is 
WordPress development. So mattcreation.net is my um, base in my creative site. And a lot of my business is actually just networking through groups. So, you know, I'll make a few grand a month and that's with zero investment. So certainly I'll run Facebook ads, but, you know, for a lot of the business or at least some of it, it is all referrals and just networking. So that's zero investment and getting, you know, a thousand percent return or, you know, 15, you know, whatever it is. So it's, you know, it's really important networking. I think for entrepreneurs, especially in the startup phase is so important just to really hit the ground running because you never know, you might have someone that you network with, you know, a few weeks ago or a month ago or something like that, or maybe say, for instance, in this group as an example, um, and then they might see this and be like, oh, hey, you know, that, that course on how to have your working week sounds really interesting, so I'd like to learn more. Or it might be a case of you're trying to get something off the ground and, and someone, you know, thinks that might be of interest to them and, and they think they can help you in one way or another. So I, I think networking is really such an important part. And now that I've left the nine to five to, to work full time, I'm really starting to understand that. Whereas prior to that, it was more of a solo effort, whereas everything was done on my own. Um, you know, really just, you know, that $40,000 website, it's, I really should have validated more. I, I certainly did market research and the fact that there was one site doing it, um, but the customers were really unhappy and that it wasn't mobile friendly um, and it just didn't work very well. Mm. So I thought, okay, well, here's, here's an area to really penetrate that market. But speaking to 100 personal trainers isn't enough. So, you know, if, I'd probably say for every, for every 10 grand, probably talk to at least two, 300 people, maybe more. <laughs> yeah, well, it's... It's, it's that validation. It's, it's so critical. And you talk about networking. And I think maybe that's what a lot of entrepreneurs aren't doing is they're, they're kind of in a silo and they're not getting out there to, to really test the, the idea. And I think that's, that's pretty critical. Is, is that something you've kind of found out as an entrepreneur that, you know, validation and, and really talking with people is, is so valuable? Like it, Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, it's, I think it's just... And it, not only is it, it helpful for your business, but it's just fun to meet new people. Like, you know, we've, we've chatted a bit, but we've never yeah. spoken, um, you know, like this. So it's, it's fantastic to meet you, you know, properly. So it's, it's really great to just meet yeah. new people. And, and even if nothing comes at it from a business perspective, it's always great to make new friends and, and you know, just to see how everyone's going yeah. in different parts of the world, whether it is Canada or, or Australia or the US. Uh, so, yeah, that's, that's something that, is really just important to me as well to, you know, just, just make friends from all over the world. It's when I went to the Philippines, you know, the amount of contacts I made over there um, was fantastic. You know, it was, it was great. And a lot of people were saying, Oh, you come back, let me know. And I'll show you around the islands and that sort of thing. So it was, it was really nice to hear. Nice. Um, now, are you big into travel? Like, have you traveled to, to quite a few different countries in your, in your background there or, uh, you know, and what's your favorite place that you've been? I, I have the itch. I love travel. Um, for the last five <laughs> years, having worked in such a high-end corporate scene, because um, this was, you know, th it was a really cushy job I had. It was a six-figure management level position, state level. It was really something that people, if you get that position, if you're happy to work a nine-to-five, that's something you retire in. Like the, the turnover rate for employment there was was almost nil like almost everyone that works there stays there you know and when i started i was 24 so i was the youngest practice manager for that company um within the country uh, and they're actually you know one of the largest medical practices within their niche uh, in the southern hemisphere so you know it really was such a great role um to be in but I love travel and it, I found it quite difficult to get away. So sometimes I'd managed to get away for work. Uh, for instance, I went to Singapore one year uh, to train up a new staff member there to run the practice over there. Uh, there was another time I went to New Zealand to basically do the same thing, train up the manager over there so they can learn how to run their practice in New Zealand. Um, but yeah, I certainly try to get away wherever I can. Um, yeah, I certainly you know, love travel and I love to see so much more of the world than I have. And that's really one of my goals of, of working basically f not from home, but from where I am so I can take my laptop and I can work. I won't necessarily live overseas because, you know, I have a really supporting partner here and, and she's great. And, you know, if she can come away with me here or there, that'd be fantastic. But I really would love to be able to, I guess, live that nomad lifestyle where I'm not tied down to having somewhere specific. Um, and if I can outsource the WordPress club, 
all outsourced, not having to have a physical location, that would be awesome. But we'll see how things scale because it might be beneficial for me with growth to set up an office and have staff here as well. So, you know, it's more about learning over time as to what's going to happen and, you know, the unknown, I guess. Um, and I pose the fear of the unknown. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. But, yeah, if I can travel more, I absolutely would love to. Um, my favorite place to visit, that's a good question. Um, <laughs> it's, it's hard to say because there's, there's been to, you know, so many – fantastic places, really interesting places. It, it really depends on, I guess, what you're looking for. Because, I mean, like, Singapore was lovely. Like, I really liked it. There was such a clean city. Everyone was so friendly. Um, however, from the back end, it's almost secretly oppressed where everyone is really managed by the government so closely. Mm -hmm. um, as an example, if you go to the uh, casino, if you're a foreigner, you show your passport, it's free to go in, great, you do what you do. If you're a local, it's $100 to go there and it, they'll scan it. So it will say, if you have a gambling problem, you're not allowed in, which is a great idea. But at the same mm. time, it's, well, you know, what if you want to go there just for friends and have a few drinks and that sort of thing? Um, crime has been almost eradicated. There's like a 90 something percent chance of getting caught if you do crime because there's literally cameras everywhere, like every few meters or, you know, every corner of every side street. Uh, so there's really good and bad for every country. So it's it's so hard to answer. That's probably going to be my hardest answered question today. <laughs> or what country is my favorite? <laughs> um, but I mean, even yeah. not not to sound biased, but I mean, even with Australia, you know, I'm so lucky to be here. It's such a fantastic country. Uh, Melbourne's been voted the number one livable city uh, five years in a row. Adelaide's tied fifth with the Canadian city. So go, Trevor. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. Yeah. So, I mean, Adelaide's great. It's, it's very low key. It's, it's almost, for me, it's almost too slow, but it's, it's so mm. just relaxed as well. So, you know, Melbourne might be the next step or, or moving overseas. You know, if, if my target market ends up being predominantly the States, then who knows, I might move over there. Um, I was actually born in the States, so I've got a, a passport from there. So, you know, it, I can't ha it can't happen nice. anything, but... <laughs> Excellent. Whereabouts from the state? Uh, in California, so in uh, San Diego. But I was little, okay. so hence the Australian accent. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Well, San Diego's amazing. Incredible, incredible place. Um, you talk about um, moving from the six-figure career. It's, it's secure. It's stable. I mean, you go into entrepreneurship. What What? kind of drove you to doing entrepreneurship and, and what are you finding are the successes and, and challenges with, with this new, completely new area, which is entrepreneurship? I mean, it's, it's fresh for you. It, it's, it's, it's kind of scary in a sense. So I, I just love your perspective on it. So yeah, far. I guess, I don't know, it was scary. I mean, from, I get, from a, a critical point of view, I agree that it, it does seem scary. And I guess the norm would be that it is scary to do, but I haven't found that at all. Like I've, I've always wanted to work for myself. Like it's really been a dream of mine. And even from a young age, it's always what I've wanted to do. And, and so there's been times where, um, when was I? I was, I think early twenties, uh, and I had a full-time job. And then I was also selling things on eBay, um, well before uh, Alibaba was, was known, um, so it wasn't saturated. <laughs> um, so, you know, selling that. I also had a part-time job as well. So I was shaving up as much as I can. So that way I left the full-time position. I started trying to work for myself and it didn't work out. So, you know, went back to the, to the man. <laughs> um, so I've always wanted to work for myself. So doing this, it, I never found it scary. I mean, I need to be smart about or needed to be because when I first left, I dropped 10 grand in like a few months just because I was like, yeah, cool. No worries. Mm. Like plane tickets and eating out and sweet like and I hadn't had the income coming in yet so that happened I was like oh shit all right I need to need to actually be a bit more smart with my money now that there's no income coming in <laughs> um but no, it's it's all come along now like you know with all the network I've been doing I'm, I'm getting a business in for, for website design and um now that I've got this course coming out soon I'm, I'm going to start running that on autopilot so that should hopefully drive in a bit of business as well um so yeah I never found it scary but certainly Caution needs to be applied, so I would absolutely recommend if someone was going to jump in the deep end, um, two things, have savings and have a plan ahead of time because I was going to launch the WordPress club 
a few months ago, but then when I dropped that extra cash, I was like, all right, I need to settle down a little bit. <laughs> so yeah, over these uh, just next Thanks. few months, I'll basically just, you know, earn a lot more back and I'll basically get that back. And then I'm like, all right, now I can launch with, with what I originally planned to do. Yeah. Well, I think that's critical. Um, enough savings and, and the steps, a, kind of a rough idea of the steps so that when you're going through, um, you'll be learning along the way, but also you, you've got kind of a, a structure. And I, have you come across other people that have maybe gone into the deep end without any kind of structure? And, and have you come across people that are maybe taking a step back, like, oh, I, I kind of went in too quickly? Yeah, absolutely. And that happens. And, and I almost did the same thing. So yeah. I really had to limit myself. And be like, All right, you know, whoa, like, you know, hold the reins up. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, very close friend of mine. Uh, he basically left uh, full time employment. He started his own business, um, and he was doing really well. His first year um, in in net, he made fifty grand. So you know, it was really well, but didn't scale and didn't apply new strategies to get further business in. So um, from there, you know, a few new competitors came on the scene within that first twelve months, and that really affected his business. Um, so then he decided to start a different business that he basically has a support system because if you're in an industry, whether it's a real estate agency or, or mortgage broking, things like that, if you go into a field like that, you basically have to pay someone to learn from them because you're forced to have a mentor. Uh, and you know now he's doing quite well. So by basically being forced to pay for a mentor because of the industry he's in, uh, I think that's really helped him learn what he needs to do. So, you know, really mentoring is something that's so important. So if someone is going to jump in the deep end, I think talking to someone that's done it before is going to be really important before jumping in the deep end. Uh, as I was saying before, where I've, you know, always trying to done things, do things solo, um, it's only really now that I'm learning the importance of mentorship and things like that. So, uh, you know, there's a few people that have reached out to me and I've helped them out just here and there just because they've been, interested in, in, you know, learning what I did. Um, and, you know, I really don't want to see someone fail. So, you know, there's been times where I've had, you know, our phone calls here and there and, and, you know, not charging or anything. It's more just, you know, they've had a question and I've been interested in helping them. So it's, it's been really great. You know, I guess just coming back to the whole networking thing where the more people, you know, um, yeah. the more support systems you have in place. So if you do jump in the deep end, it's not game over. Yeah. Well, I think that's actually important. The uh, the phone calls are just critical. And as an entrepreneur and somebody who's looking for success, I think helping people and helping them and helping them grow, there's something quite fulfilling about that. I know that's probably something I'm going to start doing is doing more of those one-hour phone calls to just help people out. I think that's just something that's just so valuable because uh, – I think both of us, we both want to see others succeed. And you talk about mentoring. I think yeah. that's, that's so critical. And, um, yeah, it's just fascinating that, that you come from it, from that angle. And I think maybe it's your Australian blood. <laughs> Australian blood. But I think we, we want to, we want to help you. We want to help people out, which I think is just, I think if you're looking at getting into entrepreneurship, that's the way to do it is to look at, helping people solving problems Definitely. stuff like that yeah absolutely the, the more people you can help awesome. then the more you're better off i mean not only from from you know an emotional perspective but just from business as well so you mm -hmm. know the more people you can help you yeah. pay your rent <laughs> exactly well i think there's a lot of successful investors that have, have mentioned like if you can help a that like a million people and you can make a million dollars you know things like that where you're focusing on helping, then it kind of it it works out well. It's just uh, a lot of people go for the the quick sell, and uh, by helping people first, that probably helps with the with the sales approach. Um, what's what's the number one thing that you've kind of learned so far about entrepreneurship, and you're you're into it now? And um, I'm just curious, like, what's that number one thing that that you've really learned? Well, I guess just with, with the learning, it's, it's been more, I've been, been watching the markets over the last few years or, or not necessarily the markets, but I guess I've been watching the engagement levels on social media and seeing how they've been changing. So I guess it's not something I've learned in the last few months since leaving 
full-time employment, but it's more just something I've, I've observed over the last few years in that it really has shifted with, as you said, you know, giving back and, and offering, you know, just, just helping people just for free. And, and it's become a point now where because the market's so saturated, the ads don't really work as well anymore. Um, certainly they do it, you know, from a Facebook page mm -hmm. ad perspective. But I mean, in regards to, say, back in the, the 60s and 70s where it was a billboard and that's, that's all you needed, that and television. Whereas, you know, these are, I don't even have TV connected to my house. Like I've got a TV and it's for video games and movies, but I don't actually have bothered to, yeah. to have connected the, um, the cord, the antenna. So, you know, it, the way things have shifted and changed where it really is now about offering as much free value as you can. And then by offering that free value, it then builds up, uh, I guess, social proof. And then from there, that then almost gives you permission to then ask for, for something in return. Whereas prior to that, if there's no social value, then you ask for something and it's almost like the, the seventies billboard that it just has the can of soup. And it's like, well, I'm going to ignore that because you know, how many cans of soup are there out there? <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, that's, that's a great approach. Um, and I think you're, you're, you're headed in the right direction. You talked about the course that you're building. What kind of platform are you using to, to construct the course? I think there's a lot of people out there that are looking to build a course and provide knowledge and just wondering if you could talk about that a bit. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, yeah, as we were chatting before, uh, so I started ClickFunnels account yesterday uh, for the first time. Um, so I, they, I did a bit of research. Mm. I didn't do a lot because there are quite a few uh, platforms out there, but I thought, well, ClickFunnels, it seems to be, you know, all the rage at the moment. There's a lot of successful entrepreneurs that have courses and they sell them through ClickFunnels. And I figured, well, it's all about mimicking what others do because, for instance, um, mm -hmm. you know, I've always tried to start uh, innovative businesses. Um, for instance, many years ago, um, unless the marketing was really bad and I wasn't aware of it, um, I may have been the very first person in Australia to offer a subscription-based uh, protein membership. So you pick how much protein you want, pay the mm -hmm. subscription, and it gets posted to you. Um, and so, you know, I always try to be innovative, but I guess, yeah, at the time, trying to be innovative with the marketing um, budget I had, it really didn't go that far. Um, I've seen quite a few people offer it now, so, you know, I'm going to hold on to that hype first, <laughs> which, you know, it might not have been the case, but, you know, we, we, can, always, uh, we can always guess. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so yeah. I guess just something I've learned is really that to, you know, to be innovative, you need a big budget. So opposed to reinventing the wheel, just following others' footsteps, whether it is through mentorship or, you know, through what you can see other people doing, that's really it can still be such a lucrative way to live. So yeah, a lot of successful business owners I can see, especially, you know, in these large groups, uh, they have click funnels for their courses. So I figured, well, I'll do what they're doing. So I started the click funnels course last night. I'm still trying to figure out how to link the, uh, the URL. I, I did it yesterday and didn't really work. So eventually it'll be rossmcfarland.com. <laughs> um, but yeah, I basically made the, the platform there. And then with the videos, you've got to essentially upload it, whereas it's to YouTube or, or Vimo or whatever, and then embed that into the ClickFunnels uh, platform. Uh, it's not hard to do. They do make that part quite easy and simple, so that's fantastic. Um, but I would recommend if anyone is going to be uploading a course to YouTube, make sure that you have it private. Otherwise, you're offering the course to everyone for free. And then if you're selling it for, say, like with my course, it's only $97, or if it's, say, a $300 course or $2,000 course, you don't really want to give that away for free on YouTube and then sell it at the same time because... Uh, I imagine a lot of your customers, if they come across your YouTube channel, might get a little upset. <laughs> so, yeah, I've, I found yeah, having it on there is, is it's certainly a simple way to build a course if you don't know any um, you know, technical knowledge. So I, I definitely would recommend having a bit of a look if, if it's something that, you know, your viewers, they've, they've got a course that, or they're thinking of making a course that they really want to get out there. Perfect. I think it's it's a great platform to to get started and and using. You you're into vlogging as well. How are you enjoying you know creating videos and creating your stories? Is is that something that you are are looking to grow and expand on down the road, or you're just kind of doing it as a fun fun hobby? Yeah, it's more for fun because I find that with with yeah. entrepreneurs, and I'm I'm sure you're the same way that. 
we we really it's almost like a, I know over the years it's almost like a learned ADHD perspective <laughs> where we've got all these great ideas that we really want to put into practice, but one issue with that is that it then spreads us too thin, um, and I'm really guilty of that. So mm. the YouTube platform for now is more a bit of fun because yes, it'd be fantastic to have you know a million subscribers. But if I'm trying to focus on that and Instagram and the WordPress club and courses and, you know, all these other different things and web design um, and my affiliate program for, you know, web design referrals. So it's, you know, if I've got too many things going on, it's, it's really going to limit my progress in every single field. So, you know, some fantastic advice I got once was make sure you've got a business that's earning 10 grand a month and then scale, you know, and then do the next thing and, and move on that way. So, you know, the YouTube for now is just a bit of fun because I, I enjoy just getting behind the camera. Um, I did yesterday on my group, uh, the Entrepreneur Startup Club, I basically made a blooper reel for my course. Uh, and that was more just a bit of fun. You know, it's obviously it's not going to be included in the course. Uh, and I had to beep out a few uh, expletives. <laughs> But it was, it was just a bit of fun, I guess, just from working from home or working on your own, it can get a bit, not lonely, but it can get a bit isolated. So, you know, I, if you can have fun in any way that you can with your business, then it's a great thing to do. So, yeah, the vlogging for me is just a bit of fun. It just, I can make it and then I can watch it. And, you know, even the bloopers yesterday, like I looked at it and I was like, oh, God, I'm a dick sometimes. But it was, it was funny to watch. <laughs> um <laughs> Yeah, so I, yeah, certainly it's something that I'd love to grow in the future, but for now it's really just a bit of free value that's really just a bit of fun. Uh, my vlog for the YouTube um, for the, the Thailand trip and the Philippine trips is up there as well. So, you know, it's just something I can just share with others just, just for the sake of, uh, you know, sharing it. <laughs> Perfect. I think having fun and, and having that, that you know, passion project, it, it, it helps. It helps every day to to have those little fun little hobbies. Um, what else would you like to talk about? Anything that you want to share with the group here? Um, anything that you want to point to as you're working towards some of your projects here? Um, yeah, thanks. I mean, I guess just as we were talking about with, you know, I have so many things going on, which is pretty standard. So, you know, I don't really yeah. want to just spam it with like every single thing I'm doing. <laughs> um, but I guess, yeah, really the, yeah. the main ones would be um, with, the WordPress development. Uh, if any of your clients know anyone that uh, has a client that needs websites made, up until Christmas, I'm offering a 50% referral commission on the sale price. Uh, after Christmas and into the new year, it will drop down to 35%, but it'll also be increasing my uh, service rate. So it'll probably work out a similar rate for your, uh, your group anyway. So yeah, if anyone knows a client that they work with or a friend or, or whoever, and they need a bit new business website, send me, you know, an email, CC them in or, you know, make a Facebook chat. And if the sale goes through up until Christmas, I'll give them 50% of the sale price, not profit. So it's actually really profitable for the referral partners. Um, so that's probably my main business at the moment. Um, and then, yeah, with the course that's coming out soon. So I really wanted to have it up and running today for you. So I would say, yeah, it's good to go. Um, so I guess we'll say it's, it's in pre-sale mode. <laughs> Uh, so at the moment, nice. there's about an hour and a half worth of footage, um, but I don't feel that's enough to offer. So it's going to be about two and a half to three hours. It's only going to be 97 bucks. So it's, it's not about the money. It's more just about offering value. It's hard, how to halve your working week by leveraging a virtual assistant. So in the course, I go through where to find a virtual assistant, depending on the industry you're in, uh, what kind of VA should you need, whether it's a freelancer or one through a company. Uh, if you're an accountant, for instance, you really want to have somewhere you can have secure information uh, protected. So, you know, outsourcing through a company is going to be really good. Uh, things as well, like how to pay them securely, how to actually set up systems so that way you can step away from your business and it's still running in case, you know, you get sick or you want to go on holiday. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's probably going to be a really uh, interesting course to come out. Uh, I couldn't really find anything like that. I found a lot of you know, how to use a VA and that sort of thing. But I really have put emphasis on how to leverage your time better so you can step away from your business and have it automated. Because, um, you know, for instance, with uh, the, the a business that a few years ago, the, the friend I was mentioning before that, you know, stepped away and made 50K in his first year, um, basically I started helping him near the end of that because with all these new 
uh, competitors that came out and, you know, it really was all hands on deck. So uh, I came in to help him out as much as I could uh, with the limited budget he had, then, you know, we really couldn't move it or scale it as much as we wanted to. But, you know, in a roundabout, so I'm kind of, you know, drifting off a bit there, but <laughs> my, my point was, was that he had automated systems in place. So he had a virtual assistant that basically could set up um, approvals because what the business was, was it was on a real estate platform and we were selling backend access to the platform because if you want to sell your house, you either have to be a real estate agent or you have to have a real estate agent's license. So if you went straight to a real estate agent and said, I want you to sell my house, but I don't want you to sell my house. I just want to use your numbers so I can sell it myself. You're looking at a thousand plus bucks. Whereas with the backdoor access, we were doing it in some cases anywhere from 100 to 500, depending on the service. And there was a basically people would enter in all their details, hit submit. We would then need to manually approve it for it to then be uploaded to the real estate platform. We couldn't have it automated uh, digitally because if they hit submit and they had any images that had their mobile number in it, that was against the terms and conditions. We didn't want to lose our position there or if someone uploaded a dick pic or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we really had to have a manual component to it, but obviously we wanted to focus on business development. So by using a virtual assistant, we trained them on how to do that and what to look for so then they could do it. So then it's still automated from our end but it's still got a human component at the same time. So that's really the kind of emphasis I'm putting on within the course on how to keep the human component, but still automate your business or semi-automate it. Perfect. Well, that's, that's exciting. I, I think everyone should definitely check that nice. out. And we'll include uh, all the, all the links in the, in the comments here. And then, you know, people can definitely check that out and, and get some of the deals that are, that you're providing here which is just fantastic and we'll have to do another video where you know we see how things are going with with your wordpress club and then also with the course yeah, i'm thanks. excited to see how it all progresses for no, you i really appreciate yeah. that because uh, yeah with the course because it is still in the pre-sale phase uh, at the moment as i was saying there's about an hour and a half worth of footage so if anyone does purchase it over the next few weeks it'll only be 97 and then if they have any questions they will answer uh email me or call me and I'll then answer those as questions and include them in the course. So, you know, being in the pre-sale phase is still in that area or that stage where I'm really still learning from everyone as to what they want in a course. So I guess that's a unique thing I can offer. Whereas if someone gets in early now, they'll still get content, but they'll get further content later on that I'll personally answer for them. Perfect. Uh, just one last comment. Um, what would you say to somebody who's looking to get into entrepreneurship and they're just kind of on the fence and, you know, what kind of advice would you give to them? I guess it's kind of harsh advice, but if they're on the fence, don't do it. Because <laughs> um, it, it's, it's a lifestyle. So, I mean, yes, do it. Like, it's, it's great, you know, to take the plunge. If, if you're unsure about things, I would more so recommend just learning as much as you can first to make sure that you're going to be making the right decision because if you jump in the deep end but it's something that you weren't that interested in you're not going to be willing to work 70 hours a week 80 hours a week like it's the i read a stat somewhere that the most successful people work i think it was 72 hours a week um and the, the, on average but mm. it was just a, a random arbitrary stat that i read and i was like oh that's, that's really interesting um so you know it's if you're comfortable working 40 hours a week uh, and you've got a stable income, then I think you're better off doing that. Whereas if you're willing to work 70 hours a week for half the money, <laughs> um, but it, you enjoy doing it, then then go for it. So really, if you're on the fence, make sure that you're no longer on the fence before you do it. And that may be just getting your toe wet. So maybe still keeping your full-time job, but selling things on eBay or Amazon, uh, maybe start drop shipping through Shopify, uh, Shopify and AliExpress, that's probably a really good way to, to ease into it because that's a really low startup. Uh, Shopify was it like a hundred bucks a month or something. So, you know, it's not that much. And then with AliExpress. Oh, I think we, uh, I think we lost them. here just gonna see if I can get him back on
Hey, Trevor, sorry about that. I had a phone call. I, yeah. um, this happened yesterday. <laughs> well, I turned off my phone oh, notifications, no. so it shouldn't have called, but it did anyway, so sorry about that. Um, oh, no, that's I would okay. have liked this to have uh, been a, a complete free-flowing uh, um, event, but... <laughs> Because yeah, in, in my blue oh, reel I did for the, the course, uh, in there I, I kept getting a phone call for the same one. I was going to be so frustrated. I was just like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> wow, uh, that's the first time that's happened on my end. But hey, that's, that's okay. Yeah, These this, this thing rings all the time. It's, it's <laughs> almost annoying. <laughs> <laughs> you almost need like a separate phone just for the calls. No, like. <laughs> live <broadcast. laughs> Yeah, so that's, that's my advice then. If you're on the fence about doing it, buy a second phone. <laughs> <laughs> awesome well it's it's been a pleasure chatting with you and uh we'll we'll definitely keep in touch i'm i'm excited to see what uh what you're going to accomplish down the road here so uh, no, thank definitely you very much let's, let's keep in touch i, I really appreciate your time awesome. and uh yeah next time we chat we'll have to uh, go over how you uh, got so many in your group i, I read your blog which was fantastic uh, that's that's in this group just oh, a few yeah. links down so great read uh, so thank you for that Awesome. Um, but yeah, I love to well, keep in touch, it's... and uh, yeah, we'll, we'll chat again soon, and, and then um, you know, hear more about what you're doing because I guess it's, it's all been about me. So I'd, I'd love to hear more about what you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> for sure, for yeah. sure. Yeah. Well, I, it's 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 great talking with you, Ross, and I think uh, your story is is fascinating. So I'm glad that we could uh, share that with everyone today. So yeah, no, thanks, I appreciate thanks that. Thanks a lot. Well, yeah, thank you for your time, and uh, yeah, I'll, I'll chat to you soon, and. And uh, yeah, if you want to check out that blooper reel, it's in the Entrepreneurs Startup Club group. Uh, so yeah, just have a look. And uh, if you're not already in there, I'll add you there now just so you can have a bit of a laugh at my expense. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> that sounds great. Thanks a lot, Ross. Cool. And, All right. uh, Thanks, Trevor. All right, have a good one. See ya. You too. Cheers.